I do not recommend staying in mine overnight. There's a variety of factors that went into this. All of this to say, don't try this at home. Please, don't try this at home. So I have this idea. I wanna to spend tonight in an abandoned mine. And not just any abandoned mine, I wanna to have to take the cage down and stay in an abandoned mine so there's absolutely no way I can leave. I'm not really longer having a good time. Later today, some guys are coming up and we have to go down to the 700 level to check on the water because the water stopped pumping. And so to get to the water, you have to take the original Union cage from 1865 and have it lower you down to each level. And only one person can operate it and he'll be here today. So if I want him to do this, I need to do it today. But it's like three now, they're supposed to be up here in an hour. I need to convince them that's an okay idea and then get supplies ready to spend the night down there. I don't know. It seems ridiculous, probably is ridiculous, probably not a good idea, but the idea of staying overnight in an abandoned, potentially haunted mine is intriguing. I am going down in the Union Mine here at Cerro Gordo. And the Union Mine is accessible by a cage. So a cage that goes 900 feet straight down with levels every 100 feet. And the only way to get to those levels is through the cage. And the cage is in this hole that goes 900 feet straight down. So I'm gonna take the cage tonight down to a level and then tell the hoist operator, the guy Cody who will be operating the hoist, to come back and bring me up at a certain time tomorrow morning, probably seven or eight. So I'll be down there for at least 12 hours. There's no way of me getting out of this mind until the hoist brings me back up. Um, I'm just, I'm literally just thinking of this at the spot. So if I'm a little bit spinning, that's why. It'd be super dangerous because there'd be no communication up. If anything were to go wrong, I'd be stuck down there for the 12 hours. Batteries go out, anything else. Oh. Yes, 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 hello. I wouldn't be able to take the kittens, so that would be a huge problem. But, it'd be cool. I mean, it'd be something. The cage can only go down when we have a qualified hoist operator here. And so one was gonna be up for two days. And all the work was gonna be done on the second day. The first night we were just coming up to essentially hang out and get prepped. And so I had to convince the guys to send me down the cage first and they're like, hey, you're mine, your show, do what you wanna to do. Tonight's a go, the guys agreed to send me down the hole and pick me up in the morning. So I will be sleeping tonight in an abandoned mine shaft. I'm just getting stuff together now. It's kinda of last minute, but I need obviously sleeping bags. These are MREs, some meals ready to eat. I got sweet and sour chicken and Southwest style beans. Extra memory cards, because I want to be able to get this. Head lamp, some coffee so I can stay up late. I don't really want to sleep that much down there. Uh, my head lamp, other lamp, charging. But I mean, I only have like an hour to get stuff together, so it's not gonna be too much, but I'm hustling. This will be fun, or it'll be something at the very least. <laughs> oh yeah, other thing. So in this mine, it's not like there's electricity. It's not like there's cell phone reception. So I'm gonna have to bring down my lights, not that big a deal but there'll be no way for me to communicate with the outside world or the outside world to communicate with me. So that's the biggest hang up that we're having as far as communication. Once I'm down there, I'm down there. And theoretically I could yell and maybe somebody at the top of the me, but nobody's gonna stay up there all night. They're going, home, they're going back, they're going to sleep. And so tonight I'm truly there, I'm stuck. There's no getting in, there's no getting out. I'm just gonna have to deal with whatever happens down there. And hey, we'll see. All right, with almost no time to spare, I have finished packing and this is kind of what the final run now is looking like. I got headlamp, regular light, some memory cards, hard hat with a lamp, meals ready to eat, got the rice and beans, the sweet and sour rice and beans, some coffees, protein bars, hand gel, a little pad to write down thoughts. Hopefully, maybe, who knows, a great idea will strike me. Another lamp, some whiskey because I'm gonna be in an abandoned mine that's potentially haunted. Oh, I do not have whiskey. This, make some tea. I think it'd be hilarious to have tea down there. That, pretty self-explanatory. Batteries, bandana, another light, another blanket, and a little beanie. I'm gonna pack up and get into this mine.
one final thing. It's like the coldest day yet. So I'm gonna bring a temperature or a, th a temperature gauge. I'm gonna bring a thermometer down. We'll see how cold it gets tonight. I'm thinking maybe 30 or 40, which is gonna be pretty, pretty chilly. One of the grim facts about this mine is a number of miners died within it. There's a fairly famous incident referred to as the China Stope incident, where 20 to 30 miners were trapped in a cave-in around the 200 level and never made it out. They're still down there. And I say this not to celebrate it or make light of it, but as a fact, the fact is mining was dangerous. People died. It's still dangerous to go down in any of these mines. And for me, thinking to those miners or all the guys that did lose their lives in this hole below me is a form of memento mori. Memento mori means remember your death in Latin. And to me, it's not depressing, it's invigorating. We're all gonna die, you're gonna die, I'm gonna die. So what are you gonna get do with this time given? For me, that means bringing more attention to Cerro Gordo, to the history here that I think is very important, and to living an interesting life. How do you take that cage 900 feet straight down? Well, it's all supported by the hoist over there. And this is the original hoist at Cerro Gordo which originally established in 1865. So that bunch of cable right there is what lowers me down into the mine. And it's all controlled by an operator who sits here and puts his hands on this brake and you are literally putting your life in his hands. That thing right there controls how quickly that cable right there goes down and he knows how far you are by this. Obviously very sophisticated dial. <laughs> and so there's a radio, you radio up, you say, hey, I'm about at this level and they stop. But this hoist, this cable lets down that cage and that's how you get into the mines. All right, before we go any further, I wanna say thank you guys so much for checking out this video. My name is Brent. I live here at Cerro Gordo. This is a former mining town from 1865. I make videos like this once a week. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. If you already subscribed, thank you so much. Your support means everything, and I will let you get back to the video. So we're going up. It's just about seven o'clock. Not getting out of there till eight, so at least 12 hours. It is so windy out here. This is the hoist building. This is the building that inside which is the mine I'll be going down into. Let me show you. And as you can see, it's really rocking and rolling in this wind. I've never seen it this windy. Already dark, but this this is the cage I'm about to go down in. Spend the night down that hole. <laughs> oh, he's about right. <laughs> we good? Yeah, you're good. Inshallah, we'll drive right. this fucking up oh, tonight. Quiet you down, you take a picture of him. Take, take the last in. photo of the, my, my the billionaire from Cerro Gordo. That... I'm, uh, my phone's on the truck. I used to be a millionaire before you owned a mine. <laughs> I'll see you guys at uh, 8 a.m., right? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. call time. You have your phone down? I don't. I left I it down. Okay, win. Win. Good? Yep. Okay. Nice knowing you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. We'll take care of your cats, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Take care of the cats. I'll take care what's of the bank account. What's a combination of the safe? Bye, guys. Yeah, what's a combination of the safe? <laughs> Where'd you hide all that money? Bye. Where's that money in that suitcase? Oh, man. <laughs> you know, if you want to come back up, you're going to have to tell us. Yeah. That's true. I didn't think about that. Uh, you guys can make some demands. You to might make... push off a little bit or you're going to hit here. Okay. Uh, it'll, it'll just rain. Okay. All right. Fingers. All right. Goodbye, cruel world. Adios. All right, the ladders, or the rope is correct. Is it good? Okay. Yep. Uh, you call on the radio when, when you want, we'll pay you some more out. All right. Call us a few feet ahead of time.
I will not be leaving here until 8 tomorrow morning, so 13 hours. Down an abandoned mine. <sighs> yep, I think I'm here. I just gotta take a second to unload. Time four. I will uh, talk to you guys tomorrow morning. Okay, hey, we're gonna drag her up. All right. So I'm here. I am down in the Union Mine at Cerro Gordo, where I'll be spending the night. And as soon as that cage leaves, there's no way for me to get out of this. Coming up. There it goes. I am officially here. Goodbye. Any way out of this mine. <laughs> you guys ready for an interesting night? I don't know about this idea anymore. Let's take a minute and just get situated. It is 728, Friday, September 18th. And I am down in the main Union Mine at Cerro Gordo. Already there's bats, see it? I'm definitely not sleeping over there. Oh no. Oh boy. All right. All right. Oh. So I just got down here. I have no idea even where I'm looking at the camera. Is it over there? This light is blinding me. I don't know if this lighting is going to work, but Am I having regrets? Maybe a little. I think the first 30 seconds down here, I saw a bunch of bats around that corner. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep on a cot around bats and ghosts and who else knows what. But I'm gonna try to get like, I think the important thing, I think step one, I'm gonna go explore first. That's what I love doing out here. But then step two is just like create a comfortable area, right? Is that what you guys would do? Create a lot of lights in one area. I'm, I'm like strategizing with the camera as if you guys know what to do when sleeping in an abandoned mine that might be haunted. Um, I don't know. I want to create an area that's comfortable, that has some lighting that I know where to go back to, but then my fear is that the bats will get attracted to the light because they seem to be at least disturbed by it when I was over there. And so it's, it's not even 7.30, so a long time till 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. All right, let's do a little inventory of what I remembered and maybe what I forgot. So first off, I got lights. Not as many as I would like, but hey, what are you gonna do? I got a couple MREs, so meals ready to eat. This is, it heats itself up. Somebody gave that to me this winter when they heard I was snowed in. So somebody just randomly sent a box of MREs, just a Keeler, no address, just Brent Underwood Keeler. And luckily I got them, but. I got those. I brought some books, which I think would be interesting to, look, to read down here. So at first I got the Silver Seekers. This book is about them finding silver in this part of California. It's written by Remy Nadu, who is a descendant of the Remy Nadu that hauled all the mule... <laughs> I'm tripping up. Um, I looked over there as if there was somebody and then I realized after I started talking, doesn't matter. So Remy Nadu hauled mules up to Cerro Gordo. This is his book. It's about silver, death in Yellowstone. <laughs> and this book is about accidents that killed people in a national park. Accidents and fool hardiness in the first national park. Who would do something like that? <laughs> so that's here. Um, I got a bunch of water. I got chips. I got 
White Claw, I got Coors. My friend uh, Craig sent me down with some amazing bourbon. So I have Bell Mead, which I will sample. I got some Frey Ranch, which I will definitely be sampling down here. <sighs> got some other food. I got tea. I got a, a jet pack to make some tea. Oh, so, so gross. <laughs> I got chips. I got disgusting hands. So I actually did bring hand sanitizer. I got toilet paper, you know, just because. I got this speaker, because, you know, let's have a dance party down here. Solo dance party. Oh, I got this black light or UV light to go explore some of the walls. Apparently, I've never done this, but apparently if you hit the certain type of minerals, it glows these crazy colors. So I'm pretty excited to do that. That's kind of the summary of it. What do you guys think I should do? It's amazing when I just ask, what do you guys think I should do? First off, you're not on here. Second, by the time this airs, I've already done whatever I'm gonna do. So that's cool. Third, right behind the camera is this weird hanging rope from the ceiling, which is creepy. Um, I mean, essentially everything about this is creepy. I'm in, it's weird because like even, I'm not even making this up, I do hear like noises, which is really strange because we're so dark and like, I don't know if it's like a mind playing tricks on me or maybe the bats shuffling around in the background, but we're here now and we're gonna make the best of it. Let's start with the course. Let's just, Dude, I hear something. All right. I'm, I'm kind of afraid. You know, I've laddered down really long stretches before. I've roped down, I've been everywhere. I sleep in Cerro Gordo, which is known to have lots of paranormal activity, but I keep hearing like kids whispering or something. It's tripping me out. I haven't even had a beer yet. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's the problem is I haven't had a beer yet. Maybe after a couple of beers, I won't hear these things, but let's drink some beer, have some whiskey, go for an adventure.
if you really pause and take a step back and like appreciate where you are, it's nuts. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's like so crazy. They, they made this shaft and they made levels and they were down there blowing it up and pulling it out and supporting it with wood. And there I am sleeping at it 150 years later. You know, it's just like, it's awesome. And I think it's just, it goes back to like, you know, perceptive. You know, if you slow down and take in things like that, life's better. Some collapse. We didn't come down here to stop. Whoa, look at that. Is that new crystal or something? It was real collapsed. So much of this crystal looking stuff. real claps though I don't like this probably have to go down a different route but Hundred years probably. Shit. Real collapsed. Damn it. That was sketchy. Look at this old timbering. They're just following the vein wherever it went. There's this timbering everywhere. Like I wonder if I could like scurry my way up there to see if they left anything up there. It seems more likely you would find something cool if you go where they wouldn't go. I think I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try to walk up there, 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 and walk all the way up. Unless there's a ladder. What's that? Nothing. Dynamite? Whoa. Dynamite box. What have we got there? Tied off old t-shirt maybe? Pants? Oh, that's pants. A 
Look at that. Take that back and explore more. It's cool. But for now, to get up there. Bunch of old dynamite wick. See how long that is? Oh, where are we going? Oh. Kind of dead there. Oh. Guess I want to squeeze in there. Jeans. It's tonight the night I finally find the Levi's. Oh, I hope so. That's the fabric I was looking at. Definitely not denim. But something that just keeps going up. So I might go up there. See if there's anything else to check out. But I just don't want this to slippery slide down. Back where I came from. I was down there, now I'm up here. Nothing too interesting that I found so far, but let me keep poking around a little bit, maybe over there. We'll see. 937. Time checks just after 10. I did the first exploration around the place. I love exploring mines. It's one of those things where I was a little nervous when I first got down here, sitting here, I was hearing things, but the moment I started exploring and finding things, it's like the rest of the world just disappears. And like, I figured out where I am, what I'm doing, what time it is, everything. It's just like, I guess if it was sports, they would call that flow state, but I'm just like, locked in, you know, like literal tunnel vision, I guess. But it's something I love to do that I didn't have this passion even a year ago. And so exploring mines, I'm sure is something I'll be doing until I die. And I have Sarah Gordon to thank for that. I have Sarah Gordon to thank for a lot of things, but it's been one of my favorite things to do. So I'm heating up my dinner, my meal ready to eat down there. It's steaming and everything. Eating the protein bar in it. And I realized I made a catastrophic mistake. I didn't bring the sleeping bag and the blanket that I needed. You know, the mine is freezing. The mine's in the 30s. And two of the possibly most essential things I don't have. I could have done without, you know, four bottles of whiskey, but a blanket and a sleeping bag are a pretty big deal. I had my sleeping bag and my blanket in my backpack, then I removed it, put more stuff in, and then the blanket and the sleeping bag never made it into the hoist. So I am here, no blanket, no sleeping bag. So you know what? I'm gonna have to drink a lot of whiskey, get warm, and crash on a cot around a bunch of weird stuff, but could be worse, could have got some other stuff, but it's kind of cold down here. So, hopefully it doesn't dip down too much more. Maybe there's a part of the mine too that I can find that's a little warmer. And take it from there. But not like I'm going back up to get it. I am here for next 12 hours. Cheers to this terrible protein bar. Bon Appetit. Oh, dude. Oh my God. 
you see that? It's like cat food. It smells like cat food. Does it taste like cat food is the question. <laughs> it's not good. It's so gross. Oh. What the fuck? I feel like I'm gonna get sick eating this. What do I have? Those white claws. It's hot at least, see that steam? Oh, it's so, so gross. brush my teeth, but uh, I'd be lying if I said I brought enough water because I brought five bottles, which I thought sounded plenty for 12 hours, but no more water in sight. But my teeth are gross after eating this MRE and other random stuff, so you make do with what you have. It's not so bad. Ruby red. Who would have thought? I'm not doing this again. So we're going for it tonight. You know, we're gonna get after it. It's only 10.30. I'm not gonna go to bed. I think I'm gonna drink a coffee and just explore that part of the mine that I didn't. Trying to find somewhere to sleep. Here's the problem with that sleeping spot. It's right by that collapse, which could have been the collapse that cost a lot of people their lives. So that's a little too creepy. That's the easiest shaft to go down. But I'm going to find another place to sleep. That's not going to work. Might just work, you know? Not too bad back here. So I get the bed all ready, you know? I'm ready to lay down, try to get some sleep. I, I look up here on the shelf, and what do we have? A bunch of old dynamite. <sighs> so I'm not gonna move my bed, I don't think. There is dynamite right there. The problem is, Old diamond has nitroglycerin in it, and nitroglycerin over time can sweat, sweat out of it, and crystallize. And the crystals can be very sensitive to friction, temperature, impact, anything. And if you touch it just the right way, boom! Last video that I make. And so, I don't love having dynamite five feet from my place, but the reality is dynamite's everywhere in this mine. It's how they mined, it's, a rare day when I go into a mine and I don't find dynamite, let's put it that way. So it doesn't necessarily bother me up there. I'm not gonna be jumping up there and touching it. 
I give dynamite the most amount of space that I can. And so I think I'm gonna try to catch a little shut eye, read some books. What time are we looking at? About 11.30, so it's not too late, but I don't think I'm gonna sleep through the night, so we'll see if I can catch a couple hours. I might not be able to sleep at all, but for now, this is what we're gonna try. If the dynamite bothers me enough, I might move, but for now, let's try to get some shut eye. All right, now I'm a little more spooked. I couldn't sleep, so I decided to just go on a walk without the cameras or anything, just because it's kind of cumbersome sometimes to carry on the camera. Big old bat hit me in the back of the head, basically. And I don't like that. Uh, particularly, it's just past midnight now. I don't want to get hit by any bats in my sleep. They're my two favorite things about Cerro Gordo are the history and the people I've met through the town. And so for the history, I mean, it's crazy to think about like, a guy was standing in this attic or tunnel that I'm, that I'm laying in right now, and he was working 12 hours a day in 1865, 150 years ago, a guy was back here blowing up this rock to extract it, hopefully to get silver to create a better life. You know, and he was working 12 hours a day underground. I'm up here, you know, I'm making a video, kind of having fun, but for him, it was real life. You know, it was, it was hard work. And I don't know, there's just like a weird, who are his great, great grandchildren? Did he have kids? Was he able to ever get a wife? Did he die young? You know, there's just things that, anytime I find something back in the mind, whether it's that dynamite right there, like, I'm wondering who put that there? Who forgot it there? Did they ever want to go back? Or to them, dynamite was just an everyday thing so they didn't even think about it. And so, I don't know, being back here and thinks about stuff like that as well, just the weird kind of like web of people. Like, I bet if we go far enough out, one of his relatives, once upon a time, knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that knew my relatives, right? There's like that weird web of humans and just, I don't know. I don't think any of this is making sense anymore. I think it's past midnight and I'm in an abandoned mine that might be haunted, but definitely has bats. And I have no way to get out for another eight hours at least. So I apologize if my rhetoric isn't perfect, but I don't know, I'm trying. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go. I'm not really long on having a good time. Uh, I don't know if you could, if we can rewind and see my face when I was just sitting back there, but there's a light behind the camera when I was talking and I have lights set up, but it was a different light. And I don't like that anymore.
All right, it's officially Sunday. Eight hours to go. All right, only eight hours to go. Sleep is not really working out too well. Keep exploring more. It's funny, like the closer you look, obviously the more you find, but I always like to put myself in the mentality of a miner is where would I put something and forget about it that other people aren't looking. So up on ledges is good, back in the infill like I was talking about. Um, just anywhere that you would put something and absentmindedly leave it there. So that's what I'm up to. So I'll probably do for the next couple hours, maybe a little two or three. Um, and then maybe try to go to sleep again then. But until then, I don't think I'm sleeping back here. It's, it's a bit eerie, if you believe me. Uh, I moved my bed. Because that's what I wasn't doing and I'm not sleeping. So I'm trying to lay down, it's not working. So we'll see. All right, it's just past two, it's about 2.15. Must have changed my bed locations at least three or four times now. It's impossible to get comfort, comfortable. It's cold. <laughs> that freaking that blanket was not, not the best. So I'm using this one other beanie as kind of mittens. I'll switch more like this. Um, also, I have heartburn, or what I think is heartburn. I've never had heartburn in my life, but I have like, Ugh, pain, like just like, yeah, it feels like, I guess what high burn would feel like. Must be from that MRE that I ate, because that thing was gross. So, overall, comfort level is about two out of 10. Not the best. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get any sleep, so I'm just gonna probably try to go more, explore a little bit more. Battery's running really low on my final battery, and so I'm only like 20% left, which I don't know how these batteries are just getting fried through. But worst comes to worst, I'll use my phone to record the rest. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Still cold, still down here. I'll be down here. I'm just past the halfway point though, that's good. You know, it's 2.15, so I have about less than six hours left. So I've been down here for more than seven hours. So that's a good thing. And I'm still here, you know, I'm gonna be here. And I think, that's what I wanted to make this video for. I wanted to show actually being down here because I'm not gonna be one of the guys that is faking things or clickbaity just to be that way. I think it's not authentic and it's not what I'm trying to do. And sometimes you don't find anything and that's life. Four o'clock, only uh, four hours left. Oh, less than four hours left and I am free. Tell you what, not bringing that blanket was a big, big mistake. It's getting very cold. There are a lot of bats. There's probably a hundred bats or 10 bats just on crack or something just going back and forth because they fly over all the time. I don't know if they're attracted to the lights. I Google stuff like that, but the reception obviously. So uh, kind of coming to the final stretch. I'm gonna try to nap another hour and then go explore for the last three. Napping has not gone well. It's too cold. There's my bats, other shit. But, uh, final stretch. Four more hours of living the dream. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, 6.25, final, final stretch. Less than two hours. That's not bad. That seems doable. So I think,
crack myself one of these coffees I brought down. Get my last two hours worth out of this, you know? Let's go explore some mine, right? Cheers. Cheers to doing something, saying you're gonna do something and doing it. A moment I hoped would never come, drank my coffee. Now I gotta go find part of this mine this morning. I can leave that off camera, just for you. All right. It's just about seven. So that means that about one hour from now, Cage is gonna be coming back to take me up. Final hour of exploring. That camera's on about 5%, but wasn't, wasn't the best night's sleep. But you know, surprisingly, I've stayed in worse places. All packed up, about 40 minutes to go. Time to go explore a little bit more. This camera's about dead, but I'm taking the GoPro. Let's get it. Seven forty six parts here early. Good morning. Good morning. Yep, think I'll stay another twelve or fourteen hours or so. <laughs> I'm just kidding, get me the fuck out of here. I'm headed up. And then coming up, it was funny because like, the guys, you know, just seeing them again was interesting because they already think I'm a little crazy. And I think that just cemented it for them. So, you know, the riff, Cage finally coming up and seeing all them and smiling and joking around about what happened was, was pretty fun. And uh, I don't know, you know, it's not something I'm gonna do anytime again soon. I think this is a one and done type situation, but Glad I did it, you know, it's part of the history here now. And uh, the only way, maybe, you know, maybe I would do a different level, you know? I did one level this time, maybe I'd do a further deep level and maybe it'd be a different experience. And hey, maybe that time I'd remember my blanket and sleeping bag, but no promises.